Hi, everybody. I'm Father John. I think most of you know me. And uh, Miss Savannah asked me today if I would do a little bit of a talk about the Liturgy of the Word, which is the first half of the Mass. As we all know, the Mass is divided into two parts, Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist. So the first half is the Liturgy of the Word. And we do a couple things in that part of the Mass. Uh, the biggest part, of course, is reading the Scriptures, the Word of God. But I'm going to walk through the different little parts we have in the Mass. We start off, of course, with a song, usually, uh, to kind of get us in a mood for worship, uh, sets the tone. And then we begin, like everything we do, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which reminds us of our baptism. And that's how we came to know the Lord, through our baptism, and so we always begin in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We greet everybody, just like you would greet somebody on the street, say, hi, I haven't seen you for a while. So we always greet people in the beginning of the Mass, making sure they feel welcome. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And then you say, with your spirit. So greeting back. Um, we set the tone. When we come to do the Mass, always in the beginning, we first of all know that we come not totally worthy, uh, not that we're really bad people, but we all mess up in our life. And so we want to have our best frame of mind and the best, best spirit when we come. So we always start off saying, Lord, forgive me. This special prayer is called the penitential rite. So it has two parts, the confidior, where we all confess to God and everybody else around us that we have sinned and we need Jesus. And then we have this prayer that the priest or the deacon leads us in. And Deacon George is going to tell us a little bit more about that. But our response is always, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Or sometimes during Lent, you'll hear Kyrie eleison, which is Latin. And the deacon takes part of the penitential rite. We either do the tropes or we do the confidior and we lead the confidior. Okay. The tropes are a reminder that God came to save us from our sins, and the response to the tropes is, Lord have mercy, and Christ have mercy. And it's the deacon's job to lead the penitential rite at Mass. The priest asks for absolution of the sins of the parishioners, not the deacon, but the deacon leads the words. If it's a big occasion, like a Sunday or a holiday or something like that, then we go into the glory of giving praise and glory to God, the same as the angels did on the night of Jesus' birth, glory to God in the highest. So we, we all know that. And we usually sing that if we can, because it is a song, so songs should be sung if they can. Now, we don't do that at every Mass, but uh, at the big celebrations, we do. And then finally, we have something that's called... Uh, an opening prayer. It also was known for many time, years as called the collect. And the collect, if you collect something, you gather things together, right? You're collecting it. So the, the opening prayer of the collect is collecting all of your prayers that you've come to Mass. You might be praying for grandma. You might be praying for your dog. You might be praying for good grades. You might be praying for, you know, can I go to a party or something or for somebody who's sick in your family, who knows? Everybody has a different prayer they're coming with, and we collect all those prayers in the collect, uh, and the priest says the final prayer, joining them all together, and concludes them with a prayer, the opening prayer. All of that sets the tone now to listen to the Word of God. And so on a Sunday, and we're assuming this is a Sunday Mass, on Sunday we're going to read uh, three from four different scripture places. We're going to read from the Old Testament, uh, reading, and uh, then we're going to sing a psalm, which is also Old Testament. Then we'll read a New Testament reading, and then a gospel reading. So there's four different scripture passages, and through the course of the year that way, we cover a whole lot of the Bible. Uh, we understand, uh, you know, different stories and stuff like that we hear uh, through the course of the year. Interesting, if you pay really close attention, the very first reading and the gospel will always have the same theme. So if uh, it's about forgiveness, the first reading will be about forgiveness and Jesus to forgive in the gospel. Or if it's about healing, or if it's about um, who knows, whatever it could be, uh, it, those two readings are always connected in theme. The second reading 
not so much. Uh, that's just a, another reading, usually from St. Paul, one of his readings to one of the churches in the early church. So those are the readings. Um, so we have those readings. And the gospel, it always stands out among them as, as premier. So we can tell that because our posture is different. We sit for the readings, but for the gospel, we stand and we have a procession with the book. So we give it a little bit more attention, a little bit more emphasis, because the gospel is the story of Jesus Christ and the good news that he preached. So a deacon can be the deacon of the word. The deacon carries the book of the gospels, and this is the book of the gospels. It's encased in a gold jacket. It houses only gospel readings from the four gospels. And a deacon proclaims the gospel. Only a deacon or a priest can, can, can proclaim the gospel. Lay ministers can proclaim from the Old Testament or from books of the New Testament, but not the gospel. When it comes time for the word to be proclaimed, the deacon will come over to the altar, will pick up the book of the gospel. He will display it to all sitting in the congregation will then process to the ambo, which is this structure here. He will open the book of the Gospels. He will say, the Lord be with you to the congregation. They respond and with your spirit. He then announces what gospel is going to be proclaimed. For today, it's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. He signs that gospel with the sign of the cross, and then signs himself for his mind, for his lips, and for his heart. He proclaims the gospel reading. After proclaiming the gospel reading, it ends with the gospel of the Lord. He then reverences the book of gospels by picking up and kissing it. He then will take it and place it on front of the ambo, so that the word of God can be seen by all parishioners. After the gospel, then everybody sits down and then the priest or the deacon will kind of break open the word that we just heard, maybe give some insight or reflection on one of those readings you just heard. Oftentimes it's a gospel, but it doesn't have to be, and try to relate it somewhat to our life today, which isn't always too hard to do because the Pretty, they stand pretty much the test of time, and every age can relate to the scriptures. So the priest gives the homily. It's called the homily because it's a reflection on that scripture passage. And then after that, uh, we all stand and we profess our faith. What do we believe as a community of coming together? What do we all believe in? And we start out, we believe in one God, and then we believe in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Catholic Church and one baptism and life everlasting. Those are the main uh, aspects of our faith that we believe in. And so we profess that as a community that we all believe in the same thing. And then we pray for the world, for our church, for the local community, and for the individual parishioners within this church, and that's called the universal prayer, our prayer intentions. And the deacon of the mass, the deacon of the word, is the one who proclaims that universal prayer and asks that the parishioners pray with him. And a lot of the times the deacon writes those because the deacon understands what the community needs and understands their needs and writes that, those needs into the universal prayer for that week. Especially remembering those parishioners who are sick, those parishioners who have passed away in this past week. Uh, after that, that concludes the Liturgy of the Word. And so uh, then we take a little rest, uh, we sit down, have a collection, and uh, we just get ready for part two, the Liturgy of the Eucharist.